All right, as Israelis wait for the ground invasion of Gaza to begin, public fury is building. Prime Minister Netanyahu has so far not taken any responsibility for the disastrous response to the attack. He only had some remarks today to the Knesset promising an investigation. So even as the military high command has come out and publicly apologized for failing its citizens, survivors say they waited many, many hours for police or the military to arrive after terrorists swarmed the community, slaughtering civilians. Our next guest was saved after 10 hours, not by the military, not by the police, but by his own father. Amir Tibon, his wife and two very young daughters, woke up to rocket fire, not an unusual occurrence on their kibbutz, which sits on the border with Gaza. But this attack was different. They heard voices and realized the terrorists were inside their home. This is video, video that Hamas posted showing Hamas terrorists on Amir's front porch shooting their weapons, infiltrating the kibbutz and firing shots from the front door of Amir's house. His, his family waited for the military or the police to rescue them, but they never came. It was his father, a retired major general of the Israeli Defense Forces, who saved them and dozens of others as he drove at high speed to save them. Amir Tabon joins us now. He is a senior correspondent for Haaretz and survived the attack on kibbutz Nahal Oz. Um, Amir, I am so glad to see you safe and sound. Welcome back to the show. You have said... And I was surprised to read this. You have said you're ashamed of your own government. What did you mean by that? Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you for having me. First of all, I, I want to say something very important. I have a very long list of complaints to the government and the military, but it wouldn't be fair to say that it was my father alone who saved us and our neighbors. They were very brave soldiers and a small group of very, very brave special police um, a uh, special police unit who happened to be uh, on our community that morning who fought an amazing fight to try to save us. It would be true to say that there was not really a military in the sense that the command was not um, in control of what was happening. Um, there was no clear management of the situation. Yeah. The high command was detached from the reality on the ground. Um, and. It was just a total mess, and the courage and the bravery of specific individuals, some of them were policemen, some of them were soldiers, and some of them, like my father, who came from Tel Aviv to our area to join the fight, were civilians. This is what saved lives that morning. Um, it was the courage of individuals who decided to go out and fight. Um, and uh, it's not just one man. It's true my father did an extraordinary thing by coming down to the region and joining the fight. He's over 60. He's a retired military officer. He took his pistol. He came down there against all the uh, advice and all the warnings of the authorities. But he was also there um, and joined a fight that was also taken by others. And uh, it's true that the government and the uh, military failed us. It's also true that very, very brave people, my father, one of them, saved us. This is the yeah. complicated reality we're seeing emerging out of this terrible massacre in our community and others along the border on the morning of October 7th. So on that morning, you were sleeping. You and your wife were sleeping when you woke up and heard rocket fire. Um, and at that point, you ran to the safe room, which happens to be your daughter's bedroom. I didn't know this until this attack. I learned this from you and from others, that safe rooms are built with special concrete to withstand uh, explosions, and that many Israelis put their kids uh, to sleep in the safe room so that you can run to the kids. You had to hide in that safe room for 10 hours. Your daughters are one and three. How did you keep them quiet? What did you say to them? My wife was very brave, and she explained to the girls very early that morning when we entered their room and we shut the door and we shut the windows and it was all dark and soon the electricity ran out. She just told them, girls, you have to be very, very quiet right now. There's a dangerous situation outside. We're waiting for soldiers to come and rescue us. And at some point we realized my father was coming down. So we started telling them their grandfather is going to come with the soldiers and save us. 
and they listen to us. They, they put their faith in us, in their parents. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.